All right, guys, we're here with uh, Mike Fuller from MulsansCorner.com. Um, if you're any kind of tech head, gear head, you love all the technological side, and especially endurance racing, that's the site to go to. Mike, uh, welcome to Oversteer TV. Thanks for, thanks for having me. All right. Um, these guys, the, the two top teams, they're, they're heads and shoulders above everybody else, Peugeot and Audi. They're going kind of crazy this year for Le Mans. I mean, they're constantly making changes to their car. They're like Formula One teams right now. It, it really is. We've never, we've never seen this level of uh, development. It's, I, I don't know what the desperation is to win them all. I mean, Audi's done it how many times? Peugeot's done it how many times? Uh, every time they're out testing, you have new items on the car. And you're exactly right. This is not like endurance sports car racing usually a much more relaxed level of development. I mean, it's not relaxed, don't get me wrong, but by F1 standards, it certainly is. Mm. And this year, we've got something like we've never seen. Which makes it very interesting. That's not a bad thing. No, it's not at all. Um, I, I was, especially on your side, I've been trying to keep up with everything Audi does. It seems like every time you see the car, they're making some type of aerodynamic change. Sometimes yeah. You're, you're good at catching the little things that I don't even, I miss. And it's like every time the car comes out, there's like something here changed, something here moved. Is you know, in a 24-hour endurance race, is it is is it really that important? I mean, you gotta say at some point they gotta put the design to bed, and you have to say no. But these are big changes. If we can see them, they're big. Mm -hmm. I mean, just looking at the most recent uh, images from Audi for Monza, for instance. Mm -hmm. uh, Basically a new nose front fender, a new, basically a new engine cover. Now, what are those for? Are they for Lamar or are they for post Lamar ILMC running? You know, we don't really know what spec it is. They're testing it at Monza. It kind of starts to say, you wouldn't test a high downforce package at Monza. So, regardless, that's a big expense to do a new front fender. That's a new pattern. That's a new mold. That's a new part. And, uh, for wherever we're going to see it, the mall or after the mall, it's still a lot of expense. I mean, it's just going around. They're spending money because if we can see these big changes, mm -hmm. uh, again, it goes back to the whole, you know, how cars are built. It's pattern, mm -hmm. new pattern, new mold, new part. And that gets costly. Okay. So. I, I'm, I want to throw this little theory out at you also. Um, right after 12 hours Sebring, Audi was at Sebring testing the R18. And it was pretty much, you know, well, because of the track also, they really can't hide that much. And there are right. a lot of pictures of that thing. A few days later, I was at Homestead, and Audi was there. I was doing something else at the Speedway, and it was an armed camp, pretty much. They had shut off everything. Nobody can get any shots. I talked to some of the Audi guys. You know, they were nice and everything, but they made sure, turn off your cell phone if you're going to come in here, all this stuff. How much do you think, if it's possible, Audi might even be playing a little bit of, you know, how, how would you say that this information campaign also? Oh, yeah. That's definitely going on. Uh, it's sort of funny. At, this year at, at Sebring, scrutineering was on Wednesday. It's usually Monday, Tuesday of the week. Uh, and usually, you know, with my day job, I can only take so many days off. So I usually miss scrutineering. It literally happened to be the second I walked into the track, they were having scrutineering. Mm -hmm. Very fortunate for what I did. And just in sitting there, the... Uh, Ralph Buechner from Audi was there, and I, I know him and spoke to him briefly, and uh, one of Peugeot's guys was there, and, you know, Peugeot was doing their usual antics of putting blue covers over everything. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're playing the, the whole game, but after a while, I just, having been involved with competitive motorsports programs, it's sort of just a bit laughable, because you really have to stay your own course, something on someone else's car, man, it's too late to try to put it on your car. I mean, even if it's so, yeah, they're playing games with each other, but at the same time, you got to be, if you're in either of those programs, it's like, well, this is all well and good, the covers and stuff, but, and while we're curious as humans, it'd be really cool to know what they were doing, mm -hmm. even if we did, what good is it to our respective program? It really is, especially as you get closer to a lot. You know, and, and I have, yeah, I have been noticing also. You know, you had the shots of uh, Audi 
testing at mods and stuff like that. A lot of the Audi testing, there have been a lot of shots, but Peugeot, their testing has been more hush hush, more secretive. Um, yeah. You know, you've been keeping up. We've been able to keep up on your site with all those changes on Audi. Has there been any really spectacular changes or real big differences on the Peugeots? Uh, probably the most interesting mechanical change that we've seen, and we have the photos, but we've done a deal with race car engineering. We're not going to publish them until uh, the weekend before Le Mans, so June first, fifth, I think it works out. Uh, basically, the bounty we put out to get photos. Work. We have photos of the mechanical bits of the Peugeot and of the Audi. So, looking at the Peugeot, the rear end is, is pretty typical, like you'd expect. The most interesting thing is it has a carbon fiber bell housing, uh, whereas the forwards, it's typically cast aluminum. Uh, so they've, they've gone the carbon fiber route, which so has Audi. Uh, but Peugeot's car has always been, from a detailed side, very conservative. Uh, so you never really expect to see anything popping out on the Peugeot. Whereas on the Audi, it's very interesting. Yeah, I, I noticed that also on your website. You mentioned it. You have a little wanted poster for the yeah. Peugeot and the Audi, the, ba the back end of the car, the mechanics. Anybody gets a shot. 250 bucks. So anybody out there, you know, we got a cell phone camera or some of that, you can get some shots, you know, some people working at a track or something. There you go, yeah. 200, 250 bucks. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and just to be clear, that's always done in good fun. Uh, uh, you know, we're not actually, this is just, this is just not, this is not my day job, for instance. Right. But, you know, I need content for the website, so I can promote that by getting people to take the pictures I want. Most of the time, the sports car photographers are taking the glamour shots, like I like to call them. Uh, right. There's shots of drivers and shots of cars on track. Well, that's all well and good. Mm -hmm. But there's a solid camp in the F1 photographer pool who takes just technical photos. We don't have that for car racing. If I'm not out there doing it, there really isn't anybody consciously doing it. Mm -hmm. So that was the, the bounty was to promote someone to go get these photos. So I didn't have to wait another year for when I can see the cars to attempt to get the photos. So here it is, within uh, a month of issuing the bounty, we have photos. It took some money. But, uh, uh, race car engineering paid for it. Thanks, Sam. <laughs> okay. Um, well, that's good to know. Now I know they start taking some pictures, too. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Audi this year finally went ahead and went to the coupe version of a car. You know, they put a roof on it. Then you have Aston Martin, who always ran a coupe, at least the last few years. Then all of a sudden, they come out with this new car that open cockpit, at first glance, looks like a brick coming down the road. And then they um, go with a straight six-cylinder motor, which kind of made me happy because I used to drive a Jeep, Jank, Jeep, a Jeep Grand Cherokee, so I'm used to that inline-six thing. Um, what were they thinking? They're having some problems. Uh, is it going to work? Yeah, I don't know. It's... Uh... The Aston program's a bit of a pickle. Well, they're in a bit of a pickle. Uh, the first thing, going to Coop, uh, I think they've been pretty vocal. The reason they did that was a cost issue. Or, sorry, going the open top car. Uh, Coop to add cost in the form of add more parts, more design time, uh, these little fiddly things. And it's always it's hammered. The reason it is because they are costly to do. You can win to a wiper. You're going to have doors. And it's just design time. And so from that perspective, from a cost perspective, that's the justification for them to have gone to the open top. Unfortunately for them, immediately you take a, like, 5 to 7% hit in drag. So you're automatically carrying drag. Uh, you know, there's just no way around it. You know, before there was the coup, uh, sorry, the open top cars had the benefit of quicker driver changes, and they did away with that when they went to the change to the pit stop rules. So, yeah, you don't want to take a, a 5 to 7% hit in drag. The rest of the car is very unusual. They, I, you know, they've maximized the internal volume, and I just can't really figure out why. It's almost like the design time was so limited that uh, the chassis body guys were having to, to shore up their design before they had really any knowledge of what engine was going to go in it. So they were probably saying, you know, it could be anything. So... You have to, you know, try to, try to prevent uh, having any problems on that side and they design for any contingencies. I mean, I don't know. Uh, that's another camp that's hard to get into. 
Uh, most of the time, I like to try to speak to people off that are involved in the program. Uh, Aston's been a, a hard nut to crack, but I, you know, I know they're looking at the website. That's another thing these programs need to know. I know who's looking at me because I look at the uh, IP addresses that look at my website. So, a pro drive definitely one of them. <laughs> and so, also- if you guys are pro drivers watching this, uh, you can just send me an email. I'm friendly. Like, I'll fight. <laughs> yeah, they are tough nuts to crack. I've been trying to get in touch with those guys also. Um, yeah. they, they also have that, that six, like I said, the inline six cylinder motor. Apparently, they've been having some issues with that also. Yeah, uh, I heard very, very early on that the first dyno test was a complete disaster. So, I mean, that was, we're talking January, February, I think it was. You know, and for March, April, May, June, just a few more months to try to solve something. I, you know, I wish them best. I don't want to be critical of their program. And some of the forums I've not been as close to as I have been on the website. But I don't know what's going on there. You know, you want to see a program do well. The one thing I don't like is to see a program go one year, do so poorly, and then the management, who typically have no interest, I'm talking about the upper management, ask them, really have no interest in, they don't care. They want marketing. However they do it, they don't care. So they see bad marketing. So they very well pull the funding. Well, they did um, They did not race at Spa because they said they had technical issues. They had to do some testing and everything. You think they'll make Le Mans? Uh, I think it would be such a huge PR disaster if they did. It was bad enough PR side for them not to make uh, Spa. I think they kind of learned their lessons uh, because in the, the week, Two and after spa, we have not heard anything out of them. They've been they've gone quiet. I think they kind of realized that not all good publicity, or, you know, not all good all publicity is good publicity. This is a case where their publicity is very, very bad. Uh, so, well, the the owner, the guy who runs Aston Martin, is uh, Dave Richards from Pro Drive, yeah. also, and uh, they're doing quite well in their rally program. They just came out with that new uh, mini, and they actually scored points in their first rally. So. Um, hopefully he'll start putting more of his energies into the Aston Martin program and that does well. Uh, yeah. yeah. Mike, I want to thank you again for coming on. Um, I'm going to ask you now, can I talk to you again right after Le Mans, get, get your opinion on everything that happened out there? Oh yeah. Call me uh, during the race. I'm, I got three kids, so I don't, I don't have the luxury these days of staying up 24 hours, but <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Call me during the race. And set something up. All right. Sounds good. Sounds good. Mike Fuller, MosansCorner.com. We'll have the graphic on the bottom there so you can see the website. You got to check it out, guys. Thanks a lot again. Thank you.